Good morning, Good morning millennials. millennials. Wow, welcome back to the Morning <laughs> Toast. Happy Tuesday. I was not expecting to be delivering a duet performance. I was very much expecting to be giving a solo. Me neither. It just like came out. No, 100%. And I'm so happy you're here. And I'm so happy you're excited enough to sing with me. Yeah, of course. And if we're going to sing, we must sing. Snitch on, on the toast, but I'm bum. Snitch on the toast. Hey, snitch on the toast, but I'm bum. Snitch on the toast. That's right. Snitch is on the toast. After months and months of trying to book her, we finally by were way, able. By the way, this was the first time you asked me, and then I said yes. Well, like, I just knew you were so busy, like, yeah. overwhelmed with, like, being a New York City lifestyle influencer, running a global brand, having a real job. Like, I just knew you were so busy. Yeah. So that was me being considerate. That was really kind. I appreciate it. But then I kept, like, every time you guys posted the schedule, like, in all the comments I was being tagged in, I was like, fuck, this is, like, so awkward. Yeah, no, but, like, you were, we were going to get you here no matter what. Yeah. And we needed a little, a little injection of snitch for sure so now's the perfect time it, no time like the present there's no time like the present and we have a lot to discuss before we dive into the fast five which are really good today um but the first thing i wanted to tell everyone is it's a big day at spritz society we are finally launching if you're a patreon member you already know this but we are finally launching our variety pack so you no longer have to buy all four flavors separately if you're looking to get all four there is a variety pack with eight cans two of grapefruit, two of blood orange, two of pineapple, and two of lemon. And it is available on spritzsociety.com right now. Patreon members got their code, so don't forget to use that. You can also always be using code TOAST. And it will be available in stores in a little bit, but right now it's on spritzsociety.com. So I want to tell you that. And also I'm the star of the campaign. Oh, right. That's why it's like so special that you're here today. You're actually here on a press tour. No, literally. You went to Stagecoach yes. with all your influencer friends. And we threw you a, a little party and we had a photographer and you guys are the face of our campaign. Yeah. It was, and how did it feel to be a model for the most premium alcohol brand in the market I mean, right like now? being in a bathing suit was like truly my worst nightmare. Not but ideal. I was appreciative of the jean shorts that I was allowed to mm -hmm. wear. Um, and then when he asked us to like someone to get on the float and like, you know, be completely, I was like, oh, he asked me and I was like, Sir, no. You like, I was like, immediately no. Off. I gave it to Emily, who has a six-pack, and perfect, it was fine. Perfect. You guys um, looked so cute in the campaign. Yeah, no. It was actually so fun, except, like, we were legitimately dead, and it was so hot out. I know. Like, we recapped Stagecoach a little bit on here, um, but without you. So just give me a couple words to describe the experience. I mean, it was, like, actually, like, the best time ever. Yeah. Like, there's nothing bad. Like, it was so premium. Yeah. Happy for you. Yeah, I know. Super happy for you. I know. Looks I'm like you sorry. had great tickets. I did. Thank you for that. We did take a shot to you once we got there. That made me feel better. And all the girlies, influencer girlies, texting me. And you know what? I really have to thank you because in recent weeks, in combination with like having um, a lot of the girlies come on the toast, but also just you really in the last kind of three months turning into like one of the most premium lifestyle influencers <laughs> in New York. Like you are one of those girls now. Like, no, I know. You're in the crew. I know. And they had a group chat, and you added me to it. And like now, I'm in a group chat with all the girlies, like Shannon, and it's like and popping Serena, off. Remy, yeah, it's popping off. And like I'm obsessed. Like I, I don't want to write too much in the chat, but I also like don't want to be like distant. No, in the yeah, chat. don't be distant. So like this morning, like there was like stuff going on in the chat, and like I was like doing my makeup, like giggling. Yeah. And Ben was like, "What's that?" I'm like, "Oh, it's just um, it's just my influencers chat. Like don't don't worry. It's like it's literally called the influencers." And I'm obsessed with like being a part of this group, so I just wanted to thank you for that. Oh my god, of course. Like I'm a eternally grateful. You brought grateful. me into so many amazing circles. Oh, that's so true. We're just like, as Jill Zarin would say, we run in a fabulous circle of people. We do. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is you're kind of here, obviously, on your spritz modeling press promo press tour, but also you are here to discuss the new, the rebranded. The improved. elevated, the n improved Snatchler. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that journey. For those who don't know, Margot is my sister. I mean, if you're listening <laughs> and you don't know that, I don't, I don't, I don't know where to begin. But Margot hosts a podcast on our network, Toast News Network, called The Snatcher. And for a while, it was Bachelor Recap. Yes. But you know, in recent years, the Bachelor franchise and just like the show has really declined 100 percent. i just like didn't have the energy to care about these people anymore right also i'm in this like weird situation where i'm like kind of friends with a lot of them now yeah. and like i just it's sticky and like i just don't want to do it anymore and like if you hate the show like you're going to be bringing negative toxic 100%. energy to your podcast and like who wants that yeah like the only reason why it was good is because like there was a time where there was like a built-in audience but like that audience isn't even there anymore because no one nobody fucking watches. watches right watches this watches this <laughs> so i was just like it's time to change like either shit or get off the pot mm -hmm. and so i shit 
<laughs> love that for you. And we are we rebranded, and it's now it's gonna be more like lifestyle, like Nicole's in law school. I'm a corporate girly girl, also like influence or whatever. You're single. Both single, like just like living our lives in New York. So like you know things come up. We have a new segment called the Ick of the Week, and like oh I love that. Right? What was the Ick of the last week? I didn't finish the episode. But oh, the I, Ick for me. Margo didn't want me to listen to it because I get agita. But and I did listen to it, and it was very funny. But I didn't get all. Did the you get way. to the sausage part? No, but oh. I see everyone's like talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was I saying? The Ick of the Week. What oh, was your? Mine ick was of oh. I was just talking to this guy on Hinge, and like the conversation was like fine. Like I, we had like two back and forths, and he just goes give me your number um, and it was like so weird and then aggressive. also update that i was gonna say on the snap story but i just like didn't answer i was like it's like just so aggressive it's really aggressive and also because the conversation before him was like still a little weird mm -hmm. so i was like mm. and then he just writes like four days later he goes pls please oh i'm like what does pls stand for oh my god i'm so old i don't know any of the new acronyms P -p -p please please that's really weird yeah but like i don't know maybe you should give it to me <laughs> yeah, no i'm like scared though now <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I'm so excited for the rebrand of the Snatcher. Jackie and I have been begging you for yeah. like, when did we go on vacation where we had that conversation? Um, December. We've been begging you now for like five months to do it because you're so interesting. You lead a fabulous. Well, I had to wait for Clayton season to be over. Yeah. And then like, I just like wanted to like take some time. And when the show comes back, do you think you'll still recap a little bit? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's not going to be like a full fledged, like we used to like recap and also talk about like how we felt about it. Now we'll just talk about how we felt about it. So like you used to be in the podcast charts in TV and film. Have you changed to society and culture? No. You should. probably should. I probably should. Because that's more like accurate reflection of the podcast. I didn't think about that. Yeah. And so the first episode is out. You released it on Sunday. Yes. What has the feedback been? It was your stagecoach recap. Yes. It was. Feedback has been great. And like, you know, people have no problem giving critiques. Yeah, of um, course, of course, of course. But I haven't really gotten any. Everyone really likes new the new format. Um, they thought it was funny. And it, and it was long. It was like over an hour, which is like very hard. It's so hard. But like when you're just like chatting with your girly, like it actually is not that hard. Like we probably will do an hour today because we're just like sisters right exactly um and are you gonna have guests on because like i am free no no no. i am gonna have guests on i just want kind of want to get into a rhythm first Agreed. and then like i'll get guests and you don't want to be a podcast that like solely relies on no, guests not at all because that's like the worst yeah like i want like a gals on the go vibe because yes. like they rarely have guests but they do sometimes but they like do not rely on it at all and they're on the go constantly and you know you could say i want to be like the morning toast girls because we don't really have guests either but that's fine that's fine you i mean not as of late you don't look up to or respect your sisters it's fine no but it's also fine. i don't i look at the toast as a new show it's fine i feel like that's fair it's totally fine oh my god you just here's the narrative you're, you're again just, <laughs> <laughs> you're just here like to hurt me no you're so crazy <laughs> no i'm kidding um i'm so happy for you i love the new artwork the, oh my god so good the reviews are rave and this is what i've been waiting for for a long time and i feel like this is just gonna be so great for the snatchy community i hope so and it's just i awesome. don't really know what to do with instagram though because like that is bachelor yeah i mean you can still do bachelor content you could like kind of have the toast is like content about the podcast yeah that's what you're gonna have to do yeah 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 and just like memes and like fun lifestyle like hinge stuff you know okay fine is hinge your app of choice i really do like locks club my only issue with locks club and ruby if you're watching i'm sorry <laughs> um is that you only get like six or so swipes and then, or like you, you get, there's a set number of swipes and then you have to wait six hours to keep going. Mm. And that's annoying. So when you're on like a binge. You can't. Yeah. So then, then I go to Hinge. You should do an episode on like all the dating apps and like. I'm on Bumble and I actually do not understand how to use it. Yeah. Do they still do it? Like I have to message you. Like yes. women's empowerment. And I can't figure out how to do that. And like, honestly, I'm all for women's empowerment, but like when it comes to dating, like I need a guy to do it first. No, I know. No, I know. But like, it is what the it is. The times are changing. So if you need like good episode ideas, like I think that's a good one. You can yeah. do like a whole shit about like guys you met on different apps and like, I don't know. But I also see like all the same people. You do? Yeah. Why? Because there's only so many people like in your age, in your area. Yeah. In my yeah. criteria, like right. Jewish, like right. all that. Right, right, right. That's funny. Yeah. Um, well, I'm so looking forward to all the Snatcher has to offer us this year. And we are so blessed, the TNN community, that you'll be sharing it with us. And, and we want to thank you. Thank you for having me. And I also want to thank you for being here and delivering the Fast Five. I tried to cater them a little bit towards you. Um, there's one story in specific that I know, like, you are going to um, cream your pants over. Oh. So, um, should we just get into it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> 
And today's episode is brought to you by, let me just get my glasses, Billion Dollar Beauty. They believe you should have the option to purchase just the shades and products you actually use without sacrificing quality or convenience. And that's why the CEO and founder of Billion Dollar Beauty designed the completely customizable, compact billion dollar box as a sustainable solution to expensive, excessively packaged makeup palettes. The billion dollar box is a portable makeup kit that uses its spill-proof magnetic lining and kickstand mirror lid to secure a full-time professional quality, cruelty-free cosmetic. So rather than buying an entire palette, when you run low on a specific shade or you want to try something new, you just refill the singular shade and go. It's only slightly larger than a smartphone and the new personalized palette is perfect for travel. Honestly, the makeup industry is so wasteful. So this is like a really, really good call. Um, and all their products in the box come in minimal recycled packaging and they're paraben free, vegan, and they're Leaping Bunny certified cruelty free. They have over 40 beauty pans and products to add to your box, like the number one best selling universal brow pencil, the magnetic brush trio. Um, the box came to the studio like maybe a month ago and I've been using it every day before the toes just like touch up and look glamorous for you guys. And it's really such premium, premium cosmetics. And I just love the idea of not having so much crap to walk around with. So billion dollar beauty for 20 years has been trusted in beauty and nail salons around the world from Japan to Australia. You may have seen them in the clean beauty section of Target. Join the refill revolution and build your own billion dollar box at billiondollarbeauty.com and receive 20% off your entire purchase when you use code toast at checkout. So that's billiondollarbeauty.com, code toast at checkout. All right, are you ready? First ready. up, we got to talk to your girl, American Idol alum Gabby Barrett is pregnant with her second child. Oh, I saw that. Gabby Barrett and Kate Foner announced on Sunday that they are expecting their second child together. Um, they shared the ultrasound video on his Instagram along with a sweet snap of the couple going out to dinner to celebrate Mother's Day. He wrote, happy Mother's Day to my amazing, strong, and fruitful bride. Such a biblical word. Yeah. Fruitful. <laughs> if anyone called me fruitful, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. She is, this is what she said, she is create currently carrying another precious life made in the image of God, a son to bear our name into the next generation. Our children will rise up and call her blessed. The husband also praises her. All right, we stand a biblical king. I was about to say, it sounds like a sermon. They're like, really religious. I know, I know, I know. Because they're super young. She's 25. She Sorry, is? she's 22. He's 25. She's 22 currently? And she's on her second child. Like, does that give you anxiety or what? Oh, my God. Wait. Was, so how old was she when she was on American Idol? Like, 18? Yeah. That's crazy. crazy. I do think it's really cool how, like, she's able to... She's really rising up in country. Wait, no. I have so many things to okay, say, you, Gabby Barry. Because, go. like... When she was on American Idol, I was, like, fiending for her to win. I was obsessed with her. Rivers Deep. Are, so good. Like, whatever. If you haven't seen that performance, just Google it. It's literally life-changing. It's amazing. And, like, I remember everyone was, like, saying all this shit about her. Like, I remember, like, hearing stuff about her. And I was like, no, like, I'm here for Gabby Barrett. And especially now, to become a star from American Idol, like, that just doesn't happen. No, it does, but, like, not that level. Like, you're, Who else you're like, know? famous on TikTok. That was on American Idol. In uh, the new reboot. Right. That... Uh, I have someone. Maddie Poppy? No. No. Who? That girl, Katie, who yes. wrote an original song and sang. Hashtag Katie. Who literally sang the most amazing performance with Katy Perry. They did like an acoustic version to um, Pardon. In Another Life. Yeah. No, this is the. Is that the That's same song? I just said part of me. Yeah, yeah, part of me. If you haven't seen that performance, it will change your life and you'll have a whole new respect for Katy Perry's vocals. Okay, but like she's not at the Grammys. No offense. No, but she is famous. So sorry, I just wanted to like make my point. Continue. Anyway, no. So I just think that what she's done is so impressive. Also, because her music is so good. So good. And that's what I was going to say. Like she's managed to reach this like really historic level of fame post American Idol. And she's not sacrificing like her personal life. Not I kind of all. love that for her. She got married. She's having two kids and it's not stopping her. And like, she's kind of toxic in the sense that she's doing it all. And like nobody can, but like she's doing it. No, she really is. And also like Cade's like in her band now. Like, that, okay. So that I think is part of the reason why she's able to have so much success is like her husband. So for those who don't know, it was also on American Idol. Oh, yes. They started dating and now they're married. He kind of forewent his personal success yeah, he did. to be a part of her future. It's like they looked at each other and was like, which one of us is going to have gonna more win? success? And then we'll support the other. And he is like her lead guitarist. I think they write songs together. It's yeah. really sweet. And I think that's how they're able to like, you know, have kids go on tour. Cause like they're both together. No. Yeah. It's, it's really sweet. They're really like so cute. I'm so happy for them. And I just like, can't wait to see her star rise even more. No, she's really like on, people are saying she's like, you know, the next Carrie Kelsey, Underwood. Well, they say she's the next Kelsey Ballerini. Who's the next like, Carrie Underwood. Like they're all lined up oh. to take over. Um, and now that you saw Carrie Underwood live. I have to talk about Carrie yeah, yeah. Underwood because I mean, I've always loved her music. Obviously I was never like a stand stan, right. like whatever. 
her performance after Luke Holmes she was my favorite. Like yeah. she knows how to put on a fucking show. Mm-hmm. Like she a her legs. Her legs, her outfit, her voice, everything. Her voice, like, just crazy. Also, she had, like, four outfit changes. They were sickening. Like, her last one was this, like, six sequin jean jacket that said, like, Carrie Coach on the back. Like, she just gets it. She gets it. And then she had Axl Rose come out to sing Sweet Child Mine. Take me down to to the the Paradise Paradise City. City. Like, just iconic. Iconic. And now do you really understand, like, why she's the queen of country music? 100%. And, like, she, I guess I didn't realize, like, how much she, like, impacts, like, not my style, but, like, my country style, in a sense, because, like, when she, like, came out and was in an outfit, like, in her pink, shiny cowboy boots, like, my friend looked at me, and she was like, wait, this is actually you. No, and with Carrie Underwood, I guess I don't realize, because she looks so young and fresh, but, like, she's been around forever, so, like, so many of the songs that she performed when I was watching your Instagram yeah. stories, I didn't even realize, like, I knew so many Carrie Changed. Underwood songs. No, and, like, oh, I don't want to spend, spend my, my life waiting, waiting. waiting like, look you don't realize how much of her music you've been influenced by for so many See years. See you again? See I was you? hysterical. No, and then it's, like, the new music is just as good. Yeah. Cry Pretty. This is our kingdom. Like, Kill Crazy me. Angels. So good. Ghost Story. Ghost Story. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm good. Like, yeah, ghost story. that song is so good. Yeah. So it's like, she's really so impressive from all facets. So do you think Gabby Barrett had, like, I personally believe Kelsey Ballerini has what it takes. I do too. To be, because a lot of people are like, Kelsey Ballerini, like, she's glitz and glam. She doesn't, she's not country. Really, have you ever heard that bitch sing and play guitar? Like, she's extremely talented. A hundred percent. So I think she has what it takes to become Carrie Have level. we spoken about Heart First by Kelsey? I haven't. Sorry, I was like... Who's Hartford? You pronounce things really weird. Like before the show, you were like, we are going to talk about the Friday pack. I'm like, what's Friday pack? I don't know what that is. Like you talk weird. What do you mean? I said heart first. You said Hartford. I'm like, Stassi Schroeder's daughter? That's heart her first. Heart first. I haven't spoken about it, but I was DMing with Kelsey. Okay. Um, it is a glorious masterpiece of beautiful music. It's- and. And so it, good. I was telling her, I'm like, it sounds like a 90s country song that would be at the end of a rom-com. Like, it's like this yeah. ethereal, like, vibe. She's like, the whole album is that vibe. Can't wait. I'm gonna jump right in, baby, with my heart first. That was kind of good. That was like... <laughs> literally. Are you coming for my throat? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Are you coming for my check, literally? <laughs> yeah. It's so good. I completely agree. So now, long-winded question. Is, do you think Gabby Barrett has what it takes to be the next next carry on the I think she does she has she has a little bit of ways to go right. but I think she after Kelsey Ballerini I don't know who else it could be besides Gabby Barrett I can't think of like another like blonde right like, blonde queen yeah. yeah and like so the way that I think country music like is bands going. looks at like the next women in country it's like the next Carrie and the next Miranda Lambert and they say Marin Morris is the next Miranda Lambert oh. and Kelsey Ballerini is the next Carrie Underwood that's so interesting. Yeah. I don't disagree. Remember I don't disagree when we either. we hated Miranda Lambert? And, okay, so. <laughs> no, I, like, I love her. Margo, I talk about this sometimes on the show, so thanks for listening. <laughs> um, there are two people in this world, like, I'm, you can really see that people are capable of change when I talk this year and, like, five years ago about Miranda Lambert and Selena Gomez. Do you love Selena Gomez now? I would take a bullet. Oh, really? Okay. Obsessed. A lot of it has to do with Rare only Beauty. murders in the building. Oh. But then Rare Beauty and then just like her recent like resurgence on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I just think like I was totally wrong about her for so long. And who else we were wrong about was Nick Vile. We can never forget. Nick Vile. Perfect example. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. You're Snatch. Welcome. So congrats to Gabby Barrett. I can't believe she's 22 with two kids. Like that just the, gives me <laughs> the existential crisis like we were having on the phone last night. Um, yeah, that's this is just I like, wasn't expecting it to go into today, but <laughs> guys now it is i'm happy for her really <laughs> super happy <laughs> moving on next up another music queen how taylor swift feels about joe alwyn's sex scenes in the new hulu series oh so joe alwyn sat down with gq for like a full like he spread his legs like oh, told love. them everything um talked about folklore evermore obviously taylor um and he's in the new conversations with friends okay which everyone's like quaking about it was off written after um I can't fucking speak English. Sorry. <laughs> it's writ it's Oh my god. <laughs> it's adapted from a book. Okay. Same author as normal people. So like, oh, you know, okay. she has like a cult following. Yes. And he's like the star in it and he's gonna if you did you see normal people? 
No, I know. I need to watch it. You didn't watch it? I know. I don't know why. It's so good. And I know. Like, Paul Mezcal's so hot. You're going to like fall No, I know. Everyone's him. obsessed with him and Daisy. Like, I know. You have to watch. I know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay? So there was like a cult following of the show. Now her next book. And she's like very sexy, you know. So he's like the big sexy character. And Ooh. everyone's like quaking because we're going to get sexy. And so... Joe Alwyn isn't worried about Taylor Swift watching him get hot and heavy on TV. He said, I mean, she's read the book and she loves the book. She knows it. Um, Taylor just like couldn't be a bigger fan of the project. So you go through like a lot of rehearsal and kind of in-depth conversations about the intimate scenes and kind of what story we're trying to tell. Hopefully each intimate scene feels different or there's some kind of progression in their relationship. So apparently Taylor is an erotic queen like me because she loves, I, I mean, can see that for Taylor. Dress? dress but like we know taylor loves to read and like the fact that taylor taylor's definitely reads like colleen hoover 100 percent. she definitely loves like porno just like me it happened one summer it's probably so favorite that's book. what i was gonna say taylor if you haven't read it happened one summer like add it to your list yeah. it is erotic and window shopping did you read that one no by tessa bailey it is chef's kiss oh and the other one um I could really, I went through like a phase where like I couldn't read anything except erotic like novels. Oh, my favorite. I, okay, wait, what's the one? Same author as it happened one summer and like she started another like series. Um, Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay, just give me a second. I'm, oh my God, I got signed out of my Goodreads. I fucking hate this new phone. <laughs> I can't. Uh, just look up test? Jackie told me, Jackie told me you know how to get my Safari tab back to the top. I do? Yeah. Know how to get your Safari tab like, back to and the, the new phone. They're always fucking with you, you know? I don't know, but I don't Safari, know Safari, like if I want to search on Safari, it's at the bottom. Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate you. You're um, literally I'm so annoying. I'm so sorry. Claudia, you do the same fucking thing. No, I know. Okay. I hate like when we spend... No, like, I know. Okay, just give me a second. It's written by... Are you sure it's Tessa Bailey? Yes. Hot and Hammered? What's the first one in that series? Tools of Engagement? No. Okay, these sounds... I these make, sound bizarre. Okay, hold on. It was about a baseball player. It was so cute. Not... Was it Fix Her Up? Fix Her Up. Oh, I've never heard of it. It was so cute, Myro. Like, he was like a disgraced former baseball player, and she's like this nerd, and like he comes back to the hometown, and like they start this like fake relationship. It's so sickeningly cute. I'm in the middle of reminders of him. Oh, the new Colleen Hoover, which yeah. I personally honestly did not love. I mean, it's not, I already know it's not my favorite, Yeah. Um, but it's good. It's fine. It's fine. But like, I guess I've just been so tired recently that like every time I read it, I fall asleep, which never happens. And that's what me and Jackie were actually saying yesterday. Like the rating that you end up giving a book really is like based on like how quickly you read it. 100%. Like if you're like stringing it along. Like I like, started it last week. Normally I'd be on my third book. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but back to Taylor and Joe, like as much as I'm so, I mean, I'm going to watch this and mostly because like I got to see Joe all and get down. No, like, I need to watch it through the lens of Taylor. I know. But um, this is just so like un -Taylor. Not that Taylor would ever like stop Joe from like progressing in his career, but like she's so private. And you remember in Miss Americana, she's like always talking about like her body and how like if anyone were to ever get like an intimate photo of her, like she would feel so like she's not like a sexy queen no. she doesn't dress super risky like we don't even know like what her cleavage looks like right like she yeah. never shows us so i just feel like this is like a level of intimacy into taylor's world that we're not used to yeah no that's true but, but i love that she's not stopping him from like i was gonna say that from achieving yeah. his goals and like his dreams i agree also like i feel like he could be super successful and like she just doesn't want to get in the way of that and i appreciate that and i think he's well on his way like he's Me very too. much like a serious actor so he doesn't have like commercial appeal yet yes but him being in like a viral hulu show like that will change sorry no one's seen like the mary's queen of scots thing he was in right exactly but he's always in like royal things where i have to watch subtitles so, like i'm not gonna watch it i understand but now he's in like a porno hulu show like i will be watching exactly sign me up sign me up first in line <laughs> streaming um and also like like i'm curious just to see what he looks like no also because it's like that's what taylor, taylor sees. sees at night yeah that's just so interesting. And the GQ article was really well written. Like, he was it an article or video? Article. Ugh. I know. He's just like kind of this like British man of mystery. I feel like we know nothing about him. And the article was very um, eye opening. Oh. I read the excerpts, not the whole article. Yeah, but, I just. But I feel like I learned a lot about him. No, I would like. I, I'm gonna read it. It was, and he looked really cute. He got like his whole spread. He I just is feel so like cute. Everything's coming up, Joe Alwood. I thank God. It's about fucking time. It's about time because like he has been living in the shadow of his megastar girlfriend for like a little bit too long. Do you think they're engaged currently? There's like all these rumors. I think that they're married. Yeah. I think that Taylor probably won't get married legally, even though she's oh, like, yeah. she's such a hopeless romantic. Like, 
the idea of her not like having a fairy tale wedding. I know, but she's also, she's like, also a businesswoman. Business woman. I agree. So if she does get so married, when being engaged, it will be like to be like you know, you're not my boyfriend. It'll be like what's her name, Goldie Hawn and Kirk Douglas, like everyone's favorite. What's the name of that when you're like domestic partnership? Yeah, yeah, like. Honestly, marriage is just a piece of paper. 100%. And that piece of paper really fucks up your business. So, like, you could have, like, a marriage. But, like, you know, you get married in, you know, on the beach without a real piece yeah. of paper. Yeah. That's what I feel like she would do. Okay. I think so, too. She's she's smart cookie. But Goldie and... What is that guy's name? Everyone likes to use that as an example. Like, when they don't get married, they're like, we're Goldie and... Is it Kurt? Kurt? Um, Kirk, Doug, Kurt. no. I don't know. Something Russell. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. I think so. Um, all right. Well, we're going to keep going, but... Not before, excuse me. You I just up drinking LaCroix before the show, like, because I'm not okay. Yeah. Not before I let you know that the rest of today's show is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. I know you thought it wasn't, Margo, but it is. <laughs> Thank so God. I, I just wanted to clear that up for you. You guys, certain people in life can just make it so much easier for you. And, you know, you don't know what you would do without them. And that's why ZipRecruiter is so important. Because if you like growing your business, you need to hire. ZipRecruiter is making hiring so much easier because they do the work for you. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash toast. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates with your job. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite them to apply um, your top choices. So additionally, ZipRecruiter has a complete suite of tools that makes it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. It's a no wonder the ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site based on G2 satisfaction ratings as of January 1st, 2022. So if you're a small business, you're a big business, you're looking for an executive assistant, you're looking for a salesperson, a marketing person, we've used ZipRecruiter over the years to find amazing candidates, and you can too. It's so easy. It's so much better than any other hiring said it's efficient they let you invite people you like to apply and it's just really efficient we found the last time we used ZipRecruiter we found someone in two days the hardest thing you have to do is remember the link that's really the hardest part about using ZipRecruiter it's ZipRecruiter.com slash toast don't get it twisted that's where you go to try ZipRecruiter for free once again that's ZipRecruiter.com slash t-o-a-s-t ZipRecruiter the smartest way to hire all right counts ready for the next story I'm more than ready so Dave Chappelle's Hollywood Bowl set, where he was attacked, mm -hmm. will not air on Netflix. That's so stupid. It's so dumb. The most talked about moment from Netflix's first ever comedy festival, perhaps one of the most talked about moments from any comedy festival, isn't coming to streaming. Netflix announced a list of content being released from its Netflix is a Joke Festival, and Dave Chappelle's Hollywood Bowl event, where the comedian was attacked on stage last week, is not included. The set's absence isn't due to the assault, sure. however, allegedly. Sure. The streamer made it clear before the festival that the comedian's four sold-out Hollywood Bowl shows were not being taped for a special. Chappelle had his own cameras present to film the show, as comics often do when working out new material, as Dave Chappelle was. Professionally shot footage of the attack likely does exist, and it could eventually see the light of day in some fashion, but it's not a part of Netflix's plan. I wonder if, if, if it's true that it has nothing to do with the assault. Like, did when, Dave if Chappelle, Dave releases it. Yeah, like, it did Dave Chappelle just, like, not give them permission to do it? Right. Like, like maybe the, the price wasn't right. I just don't. But they're always just, like, throwing money Dave Chappelle's way. I know. And I can't imagine. He was, like, the headliner of this festival. He did four shows. The whole thing is, like, this festival is, like, we're going to have this amazing festival, and we're going to stream it. Like, right. So you're telling me, like, the biggest name on your list? Like, your headliner. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if I believe that. No, it's very odd. I do believe that Dave filmed it himself, even if he's never going to put it out, because comedians always are filming their own yeah. stuff just to like work through but here who is he here's who is getting a streaming service a streaming is stre being streamed thank you um in may john mulaney is honoring um a bunch of comedians like robin williams dave Chappelle is honoring richard pryor and chelsea handler's honoring jo uh, joan rivers which oh, should be fun and john stewart is honoring george carlin then june 6 bill burr is getting one oh june 7th through 12th david letterman and his like six episode thing i have hate in my heart for david letterman <laughs> i'm sorry um june 9th is an lgbtq plus celebration june 10th is a tribute to bob saget Aww. june 11th is amy schumer june 13th is da pete davidson presents the best friends so it's multi common comic special hosted by pete davidson love that's where that clip that recently came out is from you see he was addressing kanye joking that pete had aids no they gave like a like a three minute netflix release like him finally talking about Kanye. Yeah. Um, and it went viral. And honestly, like, I didn't think it was that funny. Mm. He was just like, Kanye's a genius. So I was thinking, 
do I have AIDS? Oh, God. Yeah. Um, June 14th, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin Ladies Night Live, because they're from that show. June 16th, Snoop Dogg has an original comedy. June 23rd, uh, highlights throughout from the 11-day festival. And then the big special that doesn't have a date yet is Gabriel Iglesias playing a sold-out show at Dodger Stadium. Wow, what? that's so cool. I don't even know who that is. I do. He's like really, really famous. Okay, so yeah. I was going to say, like selling out Dodger crazy. Stadium is fucking nuts. And I thought my MSG theater was big too. No, that's crazy. Um, I'm like loving this. I think Netflix is the go-to place for comedy. I'm just like, where's the Dave Chappelle content? No, yeah. That actually is a sick line. I was a little too spaced out for me. I but. know. I did just watch um, a new special on Netflix. Remember Chris DiStefano from Guy Code? Yes. And he's all over TikTok now with yeah. his Hey Babe podcast, Tupperware? No. You I don't know. know Tupperware? No. Margo, wait. You, you're a TikToker and you don't know Tupperware? That podcast video clip where he was like, I gave my daughter the Tupperware. And the other guy's like, wait, what did you just say? It's like, my daughter? He's like, no, the other thing. Tupperware? Yeah. Say the first syllable, tub. Wrong. What? You guys see that clip? No. From the Hey Babe podcast? Oh my God, it's so good. No, I haven't seen it. We're on two completely different sides of TikTok. Yeah, obviously I'm like on comedy TikTok because I'm fucking hilarious. Right. Um, whatever. So he's like really big podcaster comedy and his special was so funny. It was 35 minutes, which is like really short. So short. But I do, I did hear somewhere that he has like an extra 15 minutes he's releasing on his YouTube channel. We stan a content king. Yeah. Um, and I highly recommend. It was like pandemic comedy and it was very funny. Okay. But I think that Netflix throwing their own comedy festival is really smart. Very smart. I think this is a great idea. N upset I wasn't included, but I love, 100%. Every, love every minute of it. Yeah. Happy for them. Yeah. Who's your um, favorite comedian? Oh, like currently? Alive. Alive, Joan Rivers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> of all time, Joan Rivers. Alive, Dave Chappelle. Okay. That well, makes sense. Well, who's yours? Oh, I don't know. I don't have an answer. Like, I wasn't expecting you to throw back at me. Bitch, this is like a two-way conversation. I understand. Um, I feel like you're not like a comic. I like, really like Sebastian Maniscalco. I think he's hilarious. So do I. And the fact that you didn't say me is why we're literally not friends. I can't. Um, so, <laughs> Dave Chappelle, whatever. Like, like annoying. Yeah. Um, also, I want to see it. So No, same. Like, I want to know what, what joke, what triggered this person. Yeah. Um, the next story is some TV news that's really interesting. So HBO Max nabs Anon Please, a production drama based on Dumois' book with a script to series order. Oh my God. So it's really interesting, listen, because at first I was like, what the fuck? But the sh okay. So HBO Max and WPTV had secured preemptively the rights to the book um, to develop it into a drama series. So Did Dumois, you write a book already? So Dumois is a pseudonym, obviously, an Instagram account, yada, yada, yada. Um, the upcoming book, A non please written by Dumois with the New York Times bestselling author Jessica Goodman, will be published November 8th by HarperCollins. Okay. In the book, here's the synopsis well, I, of the book. That's what I was going to ask. Cricket Lopez is an assistant to one of the most notorious celebrity stylists. She revamps her old style Instagram account and turns it into a celebrity gossip blog on a drunken whim, and she never thinks it'll become anything. It's just a way to blow off steam after a terrible day at work where her nightmare boss screams at her and blames her for everything. But when the account grows overnight and even wilder, she starts getting gossip from fans, juicy gossip, she has to face facts. Her Instagram is now famous. She is now famous, though no one knows she's behind the account. Its newfound success is affecting her real life. Her boss wonders why she's disappearing on the job. Her friends are increasingly irritated by her dedication to the account. And she has celebrities, investors, and journalists approaching her with bright-eyed interests. Plus, there's a steamy new love interest who she meets through her online persona, except she has no idea if she can truly trust his motives but as the account grows and becomes more and more famous she has to wonder is it the fame the insider access the escape from real life really worth losing everything else so that is the synopsis Sounds amazing that's the synopsis for the book and then hbo is turning that book into a series wow so i feel like this is actually a really good um no that it, the plot i wasn't expecting the plot to be that good like an actual like fi fiction yeah fictional story i mean it's fiction but like based on truth I can never remember. Nonfiction is, um, no, here's how I remember it. Like, you know, ugh, fuck. Like, I always know that fiction is not real. Wait. Fiction is not real. Okay. Because and nonfiction like, means true. Yeah, because like a fictional character is like fake. Right. That's right, how right. I know it. Okay. For some reason, it's just one thing that will not stick. My only thought on this thing is like, it's a really good plot, but do you think it can be. Well, like, you wrote the book, so. What? Because you're too 
Oh, because I'm doing. Oh, sorry, I forgot about my alter ego. Yeah, I'm so excited about my <laughs> new just project. Like, you're like, I was face like, just like went white. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but what I was gonna say was like, this does sound like a good plot. But like, do you think it's a good enough plot to be adapted well into a book and a movie, or like, is it a movie or a series? Series, sorry. Like, so is the series gonna be better? or Is the book gonna be better? Ooh, um, I feel like this. Like, it sounds like it's more meant to be um, like a series. Like, That's what I was thinking. So when I when I read this as the plot for the series, I'm like, oh, that actually sounds like kind of good. But then when I thought about it as a book, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Are they going to be like fake celebrities in the book? Like, you know what I mean? Right, right. They're to have to make up fake people. Like, I mean, one of them has got to be good. Yeah, no, hopefully. <laughs> and I think it'll, I'm putting my money on the series. Okay, yeah, I think so too. Also, HBO Max does a good job. Production value is high. Exactly. And you know what? Kudos to me, Dumois, um, <laughs> for really turning that page into like something more, you know? Yeah. Oh my God. It could have easily not been monetized. Right. No. And like that person's like spending all their time at Dumois, but also like working, you know, in a regular job. That person has a regular job? No, I'm saying that's what could have happened, but oh, they yeah. really turned it into like something legit. Agreed. So I think this is interesting and I will be watching the show. I don't know if I'll be reading the book, to be honest. That's fair. I don't know if I will be either. Are you ready for the fifth and final is story? Is this the one that's making me cream my pants or do we got... That was Gabby Barrett. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just like wasn't sure. You didn't know? You didn't feel the cream? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, are you ready for the fifth and final story? I'm ready for the fifth and final story. But did you know that it's brought to you by feels? I did know. You did? Yeah. Wait, how did you know that? Spoiler <laughs> alert. CBD isn't about what you feel. It's about what you don't feel. And that's stress, anxiety, pain. And feels is a way to feel better. Feels is a premium CBD that will keep your head clear and feel your best. It's hassle-free delivery directly to your door. CBD naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There's no hangover or addiction. So personally, why I've started looking into CBD years ago is for sleep. I'm just like not a good sleeper. I'm not on a good sleep schedule. Um, and I love taking the feels products. I think it's really helpful with like stress before bed and anxiety before bed. Like is real. Like oh, turn and then when your it brain stays off in your sleep, forever. so you're having sleep yeah. anxiety like 100%. in your sleep. And CBD is a great way to combat that. You place a few drops of feels under your tongue and you feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everyone's dose is important. Sore. Sore. <laughs> or if you need a dose of chill on the go, you can pop one of their feels new CBD infused mints for a clear headed feeling and bonus fresh breath feels off offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you find your perfect dose. The feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best use of your CBD. The idea of them having a hotline is so helpful because it can be kind of intimidating, like getting into CBD for the first time. You can also join the feels monthly membership to make your self care easy. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel anytime. Start feeling better with feels become a member today by going to feels.com slash toast and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. 50% is a lot. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash toast to become a member and get 50% off automatically off your first order with free shipping at feels.com slash toast. All right. Counts. Ready for the fifth final story? It's a little art news. Oh. A little auction news. Is this, can I guess? I mean, yeah, there's literally only one piece. Marilyn of Marilyn Monroe? Yeah. So Andy Warhol, the painting that he made of Marilyn Monroe, like the iconic one that everyone knows, has broken records yesterday at Christie's and sold for $195 million. So the famous That's silk so screen Andy Warhol made of Marilyn Monroe sold for $195 mil at a Christie's charity auction. Oh my, that money goes to charity? No way. I was about to say, does that go to Andy Warhol or Marilyn Monroe? It's like such a good question. And they're both dead. So like... Like the estate. Right. No. Excellent question. But it says, charity auction Monday night setting a record for the most expensive piece of American art ever sold. The iconic Warhol painting shattered the previously record, the previous record set by the late Brooklyn artist Jean-Michael Basquiat. Um, his 1982 skull painting sold for $110 million at Sotheby's in 2016. Wow, it really surpassed the record. Uh-huh. And Warhol had held the second record prior to Basquiat. Um, his 1963 work, Silver Car Crash, sold for $105 million. So the auction house estimated Warhol's 1964 painting would be at $200 million. Before the event, the winning bidder was identified as art dealer Larry Gagosian. Oh, like? Like the museum. Yeah. So he bought it for his museum or for his house? It's got to be for the museum. Oh, look. All proceeds from the lot 36A will go to the Thomas and Doris Amon Foundation Zurich, which puts the painting up for auction. The foundation aims to help children with health care and educational programs. Wow, it's for charity. That's insane. But who owned it before that, like gave it up for charity? 
unclear. Also, like, obviously I know, like, these people have so much money that, like, it's different. But could you imagine spending $195 million on something that hangs on your wall? No. No, I literally couldn't. Like, it's crazy. It it couldn't be me. Because, like, I do appreciate art to a point. Like, I do think art is beautiful and art should be expensive. And there's different value for different art for sure. But, like... That's just... I'll never be, like, a queen who, like, goes to someone's house and, like, looks at the art and, like, cries, you know? No, 100%. Okay, but here's the backstory of the painting and why it's so valuable. Originally, it was one of the five silk screens painted in 1964. The 40 by 40 inch prints were stored in a stack at Warhol's New York studio, The Factory. Dorothy Podber, um, who was a performance artist, stopped by and asked if she could shoot them. He said yes. Oh, this is a picture? It's not a painting. It's a silk screen. I don't know what that means. So the performance artist asked if she could shoot them the five silk screens he painted. He said yes, presuming she meant with a camera. Oh, sorry, no wrong. Then the performance artist pulled out a revolver and shot all of them, except for the turquoise print in the forehead. Oh my God, wait, this is so I'm interesting. not understanding a word. So Andy Warhol had five like of his famous paintings in his warehouse. His performance artist was like, can I come by and shoot them? He said yes, because she he thought he, she met with a camera. She's a performance artist, so she came in and shot him up. A, a, a revolver. revolver? I thought that meant what they used to call like <laughs> movie things. <laughs> no, and she shot all of them except for the Marilyn Monroe one. Oh, so she schemed him. She schemed him. Andy had the four paintings restored and they became known as the shot Marilyn's. Oh, and this was the only one that wasn't shot? All five paintings have been sold for various amounts of money over the years. First in 1967, the blue background painting sold for $5,000. The orange background sold for $17 million in 1998. And then it went to the hedge fund manager, Ken Griffin, for a rumored $200 million. That is insane. Okay, that is insane. That's so interesting. That is interesting. We're just like art girlies here today. No, truly. Oh my God, we're just opening up our minds. I feel like I definitely got half those facts wrong, but like it's very confusing. Yeah, no, like watch out. It's not going to be like a revolver. No, like, totally. And like it really doesn't go to charity. No, it's gotta. That's so crazy that it went to charity. Like shook. No, I mean, good for Now them. I'm like, yes, 200 million should have been 250. No, obviously. But even still, just in general, like spending that amount of money on a piece of art is so crazy. What's well, like the most amount of money you've ever spent on anything? Oh, um... Like, not where it's, like, you're putting something on your card and people are paying you back. Like Yeah, it's no, like, no, no, no. It doesn't count if you're just doing it to get the point. Um, Probably, like, your apartment, right? Like, when you do, like, first month, last month, security. Oh, um, taxes. Uh, that doesn't count. Okay, because, like... Because you have no choice. Yeah. Um, I guess probably first month, last month, or, like, I think what I maybe purchased um, my card A ring. Mm. Really? I don't know. Cool. What about you? <laughs> Uh, actually, I know what the most amount of money you've ever spent on. What? Your dog walker. Oh, stop. <laughs> but that's over the course of years. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not fair. No, the most amount of money I've ever spent um, on something is probably a purse. Yeah. Same. No regrets. No. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Counselor, it has been a delight, a joy, an honor, seriously, to spend this much time with you. You are so funny and everything of the sort, and I love you, and I think everyone should listen to your podcast, The Snatchler 2.0, revamped. You're going to love it. It's not even about The Bachelor anymore. Available. Tell everyone where they can listen. Available on po- Apple Podcasts. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while. Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere that you can find podcasts anywhere. is where you can find me. And follow The Counselor on Instagram at, at Margosry, M-A-R-G-O-S-H-R-Y. I love you so much. I love you so much. Have, Thank you guys for having me. Have a great day at work. Ugh. Thanks. Guys, don't forget to head over to spritzsociety.com. Get your variety packs, two cans of each flavor. That's eight cans total. You don't have to buy the flavor separately anymore, but you can if you want to stock up on one particular flavor. Spritzsociety.com, Patreon members. Don't forget to use your code. I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to the Morning Chelsea Millennium Morning Show where we deliver the best side stories. Oh, sorry. Wait, I have one thing to say. Hmm. Just really quick scheduling update. The next two shows are Ben and Jackie, and they've decided to switch days for both of their schedules. So tomorrow is Jackie, Hump Day with Jackie, Dear Toasters with Jackie. Thursday is Ben. So it's like the same thing, just like two days switch. So I just want, I didn't, I didn't feel like posting the schedule on Instagram again, again for like one minor change. I get it. Thank you so much for listening to the Morning Show, the Millennium Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts everywhere. Podcasts can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, everybody gets boxes, all the places. So I'm listening to podcasts, not as much as I want. I didn't want breath. Oh my god. That was crazy. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the morning show.
Have an amazing day, you guys. We'll see you tomorrow for Hump Day. Bye.